What up everybody, this is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 220-1002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you are gonna learn about implementing basic disaster prevention and recovery methods. So let's talk about backup and recovery. So for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS systems, there are several ways to backup images such as cloud backups, using a backup service, or backing up to network attached storage systems on a network. And for each backup method, there are three levels of data backups. The first one you have is a system image. This makes a copy of an entire disk, including the operating system, which is known as the system image. This is also known as a full backup or snapshot and can be used to restore a failed computer if there is a failure. Then you have a file level backup. This backs up or archives files such as documents, reports, and pictures. And then we have critical application backups. This backs up applications needed to restore business after a disaster. This can be accomplished with the system image or with VMs that can load to run very quickly. Then we have backup testing. So backup testing is the activity of testing in a controlled environment, how well an application is able to recover from crashes, hardware failures, or other similar problems to allow for IT staff to practice restoration so the skill is in place when it is needed most. Then we have UPS or an uninterruptible power supply. And this is an electronic apparatus that provides emergency power to a load when the input power or mains power fails. And UPS is typically used to protect hardware such as computers, data centers, telecommunications equipment, or other electronic equipment where an unexpected power disruption could cause injuries, fatalities, serious business disruptions, or data loss. And UPS differs from an auxiliary or an emergency power system or standby generator in that it will provide near instantaneous protection from input power interruptions by supplying energy stored in batteries. Next, we have a surge protector. So a surge protector, this is an appliance or device intended to protect electrical devices from voltage spikes and alternating current circuits. The most common type of surge protectors are power strips that are plugged into a grounded wall outlet to protect devices such as PCs, TVs, and other common electronic devices. If there is a surge or spike in power, a protector simply breaks the circuit and the device loses power. Next, we have local storage. So local storage consists of backing up data on workstations to an external drive, such as a hard drive or a USB flash drive. The Windows backup and file history utilities and Time Machine and Mac OS easily back up files and system images to external hard drives. And depending upon the distribution of Linux being used, it can include several utilities that can be used for backups, such as the command line tar, rsync, or grsync, which stands for GUI for rsync utilities. And then we have cloud storage. So cloud storage is a model of computer data storage in which the digital data is stored in logical pools, which are said to be the cloud. The physical storage spans multiple servers, sometimes in multiple locations, and the physical environment is typically owned and managed by a hosting company. These cloud storage providers are responsible for keeping the data available and accessible and the physical environment protected and running. Some popular cloud storage providers that provide varying levels of storage space, encryption services, and price points are Amazon Drive, Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive for Windows. And below is a wonderful little chart showing you some of the differences between cloud and local storage. And then we have account recovery options. So there are a variety of ways to recover an account, such as you could submit an email address associated with an account on a login page and then have a password recovery link sent via email. You can have tech support reset an account with a temporary password that must be reset upon login. You can answer secret questions with answers provided during the account setup, or you can have a system administrator use Windows Active Directory admin tools to recover user accounts. 
So that was just a quick little video on basic disaster prevention and recovery methods. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221002 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, Peace.